Brandon from Transit X, and I want to talk about transit. These are some of the issues that everyone basically faces on a daily basis. Traffic, the waiting for a bus or a train, the high cost, so you see the green on extension being a billion dollars more, you see the north-south connector charging um, seven billion dollars, the high rate of accidents for vehicles, and just the carbon emissions. If you look at the greenhouse gases, the majority of the greenhouse gases are from transportation, and a vast majority of that is from transportation in urban settings. Look at auto accidents. In urban settings, uh, 1.5 million per year, 20,000 fatalities per year. Now, Transit X, we're going to replace cars, buses, trains, and metropolitan areas. It's an ultra lightweight, suspended monorail, personal rapid transit system. Some of the features, that's a mouthful, I know, but the visuals say, what, it's a million words? Was it a million words that you do it? So you can see it. Offline stops, which means that uh, very, uh, offline stops means the main line can keep on going while there's a pod that's stopping. Uh, On-demand, non-stop trip, so it's like a flight in that you accelerate once, and when you get to your destination, you decelerate once. There's no transfers, there's no, uh, they're non-stop trips, and there's a pod that's always waiting for you. Huge energy savings, a minimum of at least 500 miles per gallon, probably about 10 times more efficient than the most efficient electric cars. Carbon-free, all-electric, solar-powered, infrastructure that's 30 times less costly. So look at the dollars per mile for the Green Line extension, it's going to be about eight, what about $400 million or more per mile. This is like 10 to 20 million. <laughs> it's a carbon fiber shell that holds a family of four. So it can hold a family of four or five or three normal sized adults. Here's some of the loops that we planned. So instead of having a green line extension that's going four miles through nothing, we could have a Somerville loop, which can connect all the major areas, Orange Line, Red Line, Green Line, Lechmere, be able to go from Harvard Square down across to Logan Airport in 12 and a half minutes, guaranteed all weather, no stopping. We could connect MIT and Harvard. We can start to do a downtown Boston loop to connect North Station and South Station and all the commercial districts here with 10 stops on that three-mile loop. We can connect up to Logan Airport with the Boston Archway. Think of the St. Louis Arch, and it's an iconic structure that would be privately financed. And this would be the view going over from, from that. So have we thought of, <laughs> have we thought about all those things? Yes, and there's probably about a thousand pages that we can use to back up everything that we're saying. And let me pass it over to Jean. Okay, so Mike tells me that I have 60 seconds to tell you how good I am. <laughs> so here it is. A system like this, of course, needs a good vehicle, needs a good guideway. But what's, more, what's as important as the vehicle and guideway is the controls te technology. Because if you can't control these vehicles, they're just going to run around wild and hit each other and uh, not take you where you want to go. So what I bring into the team is that I've been developing control technology for systems like this for over four, nearly 40 years now. The first PRT system that went into operation in the world was at Morgantown, West Virginia. And the Boeing company was the company that developed that, and I was on the design team that developed the control technology for the Morgantown Personal Rapid Transit System. That system operates at about a 15 second headway. What, what Mike wants is much, much better than that, and we'll talk about that briefly in the morning. The other thing I did was I worked for the San Francisco Bay Area Rapid Transit District for 25 years. There I developed the first fail-safe computer control, con computer control controller for trains. If you ride the bike system today, I'm sorry, am I sorry. Yep. Okay, <laughs> it's my computer that's running it. We also, I also have developed technology that is being sold all over the world right now. So I've been doing this a long time. How safe? It's gonna, it, it will it's never fail. Billion years. Basically, it never, it never fails. It, none of his stuff has failed yet. In, in well, not in my lifetime. lifetime. Not in his lifetime. <laughs> so. And I've certified these systems, so the uh, regulatory commissions, like the, the California Public Utility Commission, and I have now uh, applied for 12 patents for a new concept in control called dynamic block control. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> so, um, because we, we will create a test track, so we don't, this is sort of a live demo, so in that this was a system that they built that will actually, uh, that was actually using the, uh, the systems. 
And it's like TCP IP because small payloads can achieve a high capacity. So here's a large train that's ex that a bunch of people are exiting and now they're entering in individual pods in a 10 bay arrangement and then they're going to be merging onto the lane. So there's this stages for domino effect. We're approaching Chinese, if anybody knows Chinese, they can sort of see the Chinese business plan, different project <laughs> loops. And here's where I'm going to end on our slide is that we need your help. It's not every day that somebody tells you that they're going to end global warming. And this is how we're going to do it. We are going to uh, solve it through the transit problem because we're going to convert the transit systems and now based on 100 year old technologies, buses, trains, cars, to, a, uh, to the system that you just saw that will significantly reduce the carbon and it's going to give you two more free weeks of free time. If you have a 30 minute commute, your commute will be 10 minutes. If you factor that out over a year, you're gonna get two free weeks of time. And I'm not gonna use public funding to do it, which comes to you, okay? I haven't publicized the Indiegogo campaign and I need to raise a quarter of the funds before public launch. Is that so, a billion dollars? What's that? A billion? No, I'm raising, uh, trying to raise one million. But my goal I'm setting is 100,000. So I need to raise $25,000, ideally at least 5,000 tonight from you guys. But seriously, if you want, so if you want to end global warming, if you want free time, if you want a better transit system, you don't want to spend billions of dollars that they're gonna to try to spend on the Green Line extension and the loop, then you'll say you'll go to transitx.com. At the bottom, there's a link called Indiegogo Campaign for Boston New Tech. And you click on that and you say, how much is it worth Worth it to you to do that. Questions? Sure. I mean, I, t I take the T all the time. I take the train. I take. I use. I travel. But what if you? Uh, what if you did a small? I like what you're doing. I see some of what you're doing. I'm interested in space projects. But what if you did something that made my life more convenient at Logan Airport yes. or other airports? I shouldn't even say this. But if you took took all your knowledge and made a smaller Mm -hmm. Project raise the money for that. It'll oh, I am. Yeah. So let me just you say the stages. Me more is John Q. Public. Okay, so if you look at the stages, go back a few slides so you can see the stages. So we're doing this in a series of stages. So one of them will be the seed stage. That's where we are now. Then a proof of concept, which is the full prototype, one to two million. That's where I'm doing crowd and direct. Then I'm doing a test system that will be a combination of crowd and direct private placement for ten to twenty million, which will be an operational test system that is portable for marketing. So I'll be able to set it up and run it. And then I'm going to be creating the loops uh, using bonds and green bonds and ways of raising the, the capital needed because about 10 million a mile once we get into the, the production of it. So yes, there's a series of stages. And so what I'm raising now is the money to do the, the validation. Because if people see that this is working and they, they can write it and they can see it, then everything else is downhill from there. It's a domino effect. So how does this compare with self-driving electric cars? About 10 times more efficient, about 10 times less costly, and it can be available 10 times uh, sooner in terms of yearly because it's just, PRT was introduced in like 40 years ago, but the, the devil's in the details. And the Google car and other things, that won't be on your streets for probably at least 10 or 20 years, and it'll be much less efficient. So something public, Financing that's not as intrusive uh, as SBIR mm -hmm. or STTR, you should look at that. Yes. Pull in the one to two million for that. Yes. Have you seen the Simpsons monorail episode? Yes. <laughs> you know, uh, Conan O'Brien, so he did it after the Money Man, and it was a monorail system, but it wasn't a PRT system. And there's actually 19 operational monorails in different cities around the world. Some of them are privately operated because they actually turn a profit. So just one. Quick, like, silly question, but uh, federal handicap statutes. Yep, fully ADA accessible for every station. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes. somebody's gonna, in a wheelchair, gonna get yes. on and off this thing. Yes, they are. Okay, nobody's last ever question. gonna drop from the sky. No. <laughs> okay. uh, one last question, who's, who's gonna raise their hand? So, how is this in comparison with the stuff that they're looking at for, like, Hyperloop? Because mm -hmm. they're talking about similar type of loop systems. <clears throat> micro-sized pods, that type yep. of stuff. Uh, typically that is so high speed that with uh, you're doing it for longer distances, you're trying to replace short term or short uh, uh, aircraft. What I'm trying to do is replace the 99% case. 
getting to work on time every day without fail, no matter what the weather conditions are, and doing it at so I can integrate it into the city environment. Something like a tube or hyperloop is so big that you wouldn't be able to see it, and as you saw from the initial video, you can make it so it just blends in with the environment. It's actually less intrusive than cars. Local versus distance. Then. Local versus distance as well. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.